Alright, so good morning everyone. Today, we will discuss module 2 of this subject, Facilitating Learning, which is under the module 2 is the Learner-Centered Psychological Principles or what we call the LCP. But before that, we will be um, reading or discussing our objectives for today, okay? So at the end of this module, challenge yourself to attain the following learning outcomes. So the first one is, the first objective is to explain the 14 principles. The second objective is to advocate the use of the 14 principles in the teaching learning process. Alright, so that would be our two objectives for this discussion or this module 2. Alright, so as you can see on the screen, um, my dear students, we have the 14 learner-centered principles. It is um, divided into four, four parts. So the first part is the cognitive and metacognitive factors, which consist six principles. Right. The second one is the motivational and the affecting factors, which consist three principles. All right. So the third one is the developmental and social factors, which consist two principles. And the last one is the individual difference factors, which consist uh, three principles. All right. So before we will proceed to anything else, we will first discuss the Learner-Centered Psychological Principle or the LCP. Okay, so Learner-Centered Psychological Principles. The Learner-Centered Psychological Principles were put together by the American Psychological Association. And the following 14 psychological principles pertain to the learners and the learner learning process. The 14 principles have the following aspects. So this is the, the aspect. So they focus or the LCP focus on psychological factors that are primarily internal to and under the control of the learner rather than conditioned habits or psychological, sociological factors. So however, the principles also attempt to acknowledge external environment and contextual factor that interact with this internal factor. So, um, the LCPT created not only the inter internal factors of the learners or the school itself or the learning itself but also it affects the external environment when we talk about external environment of the learners it is the their emotions their skills and the other uh, mga substances na hindi kasama si academically. Kasi when we talk about internal, siya si academics. External naman, it includes their behavior, their emotion, their attitudes, their culture, and whatsoever. That makes them different. Of course, every learner learners have a different approaches in learning. Especially may mga factors na nakaka-apekto dito. So that is why the LCP principles is um, ginawa. Alright? So next, the principles are intended to deal holistically with learners in the con context of real world learning situations. Thus, they are best understood as an organized set of principles. No principles should be viewed in isolation. So, all of the principles in LCP, LCP would not be isolated because they have its own part of every learning. So, how about um, um, LCP is deal holistically with with the learners. How about that? So when we talk about holistic education concept, it is the philosophy of education, the whole person. So, ang buong pagkatao ng bata, walang disregard. That is why, ang sinabi nga dito on the last part, no principle should be viewed isolated or isolation. Walang disregards. okay? So, when we talk about holistically, it is the wholeness of every person. So, every learner. Not only the learner, but also for the teacher, alright? So, 
is gaining steam in learning circles as school struggles to improve students' outcome. So many organizations in holistic, uh, holistic educational approach, uh, many organizations are realized that students need more than just a strong foundation in a core curriculum. They also need to support it by community and to develop a compassionate understanding of the world around, around them. That is why when we talk about holistically, it is um, not only in academics, but also in the real world learning situations. So, pasok pa rin po si Mensa Cognition dito. It's because of the situation na madadala nila all throughout their life. Okay? So, the third one is, the 14 principles are divided into those referring to 1. Cognitive and metacognitive. 2. Motivational and affective. 3. The developmental and social, and four is the individual differences, factors influencing learners and learning. So, yung pang tatlo, yan yung sinabi ko kanina, it is divided into four. Alright, so ang 14 na yun, na principles, divided siya sa apat. So, under cognitive and metacognitive is the six principles. Under naman kay motivational and effective factors is three principles. The developmental and social factors uh, consist of two principles, alright? So, it is divided. So, of course, the last, the individual differences factors, that is three principles. Alright, and finally, the principles are intended to apply to all learners from children to teachers, to administrators, to parents, and to community members involved in our educational system. Alright, so the learner-centered psychology principles, which are consistent with more than a century of research on teaching and learning, are widely shared and implicitly recognized in many excellent programs found in today's schools. They are also integrate research and practice in various areas of psychology, including developmental, educational, experimental, social, clinical, organizational, community, and school psychology. So, in addition to this, this principle reflects conveniently a uh, conventional, sorry, conventional and scientific wisdom. So they comprise that only systematically research and evolving learner-centered principles that can lead to effective schooling, but also principles that can lead to a positive mental health and productivity of our nation's children, their teachers, and the system that serve them. So of course, cognitive and metacognitive factors, as you can see on the screen, we have this one. The principles one, so we have the six principles under cognitive and metacognitive fa factors. So, um, before that, before we explain that principle one to six, um, let me first uh, insert this one. So, the learner-centered psychological principle or the LCP is a framework for developing and incorporating the components of new design for schooling. schooling. So, these principles emphasize the active and reflective nature of the learner, learnings and the learners. So, we have the six principles under the cognitive and metacognitive factors. We will first discuss the first six principles. All right. So we have the principle one, which is the nature of the learning process. Um, principle two is the goal of the learning process. Principle three is the constructions of knowledge. Principle four is the strategic thinking. Fifth principle is the thinking about thinking. And the sixth principle is context of learning. So, all right. So we will be having discuss first the first principle nature of the learning process so when we talk about nature of learning process it is the learning of a complex subject matter is most effective when it is an intentional process of constructs constructing meaning from information and experience so of course 
they are different there are different types of processes so for example habit habit formation in motors learning uh, in motor learning and learning that involves the generation of knowledge or cognitive skills and learning strategies we have the learning in schools emphasizes the use of international intentional processes that student can use the construct meaning from information experience and their own thoughts and belief so we have the third explanation to nature of learning process we have the successful learning in a uh, learners are active goal directed self-regulating assume and personal responsibility for contributing to their own learning all right so we will discuss the first one okay so on the first nature in of the learning uh, learning process it is the learning is active and social is process so what is the very very good example under this first principle so for example a child learns how to clap hands by seeing someone else doing it Okay, for example ha, nung bata pa tayo, hindi naman tayo kaagad nagkaklap ng hands, di ba? Of course, ang nagtuturo sa atin yan, yung mga people around us. Especially our parents, our grandmothers, our aunts, our titos, titas, and people that surround us. Di ba? Sinasabi nila, okay baby, clap your hands, eh, clap, 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 clap. So of course, as, as a bata, so... Meron tayong parang uh, mimicking something on the elders. Alright, so we have, uh, kagaya niya, natututo ang bata na mag-clap sa hands dahil nakikita niya, tinuturo, paano mag-clap ng hands. Diba, minsan, pag hindi talaga nagigets ng bata, kung kunyari tayo as as auntie or nanay or tatay, diba, pag hindi talaga matuto, diba, kinukuha natin yung mga kamay, tapos ginabang-bang-bang natin yung mga kamay nila in order to to teach them how to clap their hands. So, it is um, pasok po siya kay nature of learning process. So, of course, um, learning also takes place through direct experience or direct experiences. For example, a child learns to write by practicing writing. So, of course, after, after na ituturo yung clapping of hands, di ba may mga stages na paano natin turuan magsulat ang bata? Especially sa mga nanay out there or sa mga titas out there or dakilang titas or titos. Di ba minsan, kung atay papel, sulat-sulat tayo. Okay, straight line, straight line, straight line. Of course, learning is through experiencing. You have uh, na kailangan mo silang ipa-experience on how to write. Okay? Kagaya po sa metacognition as you can still remember our metacognitive na lesson. We have... Uh, kailangan mong ipa-experience. You have to experience it in order to learn from it. Okay po ba tayo doon? Alright, that's a very, very good example for first principle, nature of learning process. Okay. Nature of the learning process. These are different types of learning processes. Okay. It's kagaya kanina, habit formation in motor learning, yung clapping of the hands, yung writing sa mga letters or writing sa pag straight line, how to draw straight line, how to draw circle. And learning that involves the generation of knowledge or cognitive skills in, and learning strategies. Learning in school emphasizes the use of intentional processes that students can use to Construct meaning from information, experience, and their own thoughts and beliefs. So, malaki ang contribution ni experience sa principal ones. Kasi once they already experience and they learn about what they experience, of course, magiging belief na nila yun. Kunyari, how to write letter A. So, pag tinuro sa kanila... Okay, straight line, ay slant line muna to the right, slant line to the left, and then you cross the line all throughout the slanting lines. So, how you that's how you do it, the, the letter A. Of course, 
they, they tinuro sa kanila then pina-experience mo sa kanila on how to write the letter A and of course magiging parang magiging part na siya ng paniniwala niya na ganun ang pagsulat ng letter A depende po kung paano ang strategy or ano ang strategy na ginamit sa kanya so magiging ano niya na yun ah, magiging habit niya na yun alright so next we have the second goal or second principles. The goals of the learning process. Okay? The successful learners over time and with support and instructional guidance can create meaningful, coherent representations of knowledge. So this explains the strategic nature of learner learnings requires students to be goal directed. So, second is to construct useful representation of knowledge and to acquire the thinking and the learning strategies necessary for continued learning, success across the lifespan. So, students must generate and pursue uh, personally relevant goals. So, initially, students' short-term goals and learnings may be sketchy in an area, but over the time, their understanding can be refined by a filling, a filing gaps, resolving inconsistencies, and deepening their understanding of the subject matter so that they can reach longer-term goals. So, educators can assist learners in creating meaningful learning goals that are consistent with both personal and educational aspirations and interest okay meaning to say the strategic nature of learner uh, learning requires students to be goal directed of course in every way that we have in our David uh, daily daily routines and responsibilities diba may mga goals tayo of course students also have that one not only students but teachers diba uh, sa lesson planning, before we plan, we should have the objectives. Okay, before starting this module, we we before we, before we discuss this module two or the LCP, we do discuss uh, what what is our goal for this discussion or for this lesson. So, ganun din po ang mga bata. Ano ang magiging goal nila? Not only in the short term na goal, but also in the longer terms of goal. Especially that there is a con con contents, uh, consistencies in learning. Okay? Kagaya yan. For example, as a parent, ano ang goal mo? Sa 2 years old mo na bata. Of course, kailangan medyo straight na magsalita at the same time marunong na magsabi ng my name is... Okay, my name is Maria Bernadette Makasait. So, kailangan mo siyang may consistencies dapat ang pagturo mo. What do we mean by consistencies? Yung tipong ginagawa mo na rin siyang routine mo at the same time naririnig din ng mga bata. Kasi, pag tinuro mo lang sa kanila ng once and twice, walang inconsistencies na nangyayari, nakakalimutan nila yan. And of course, ang tipong para mag ma, marunong na sila magsabi ng pangalan is your short term goal marunong na siya magsalita ng pangalan niya how about ang tanong how about tinalo up mo ba sa kanila pag tinanong ulit nakalimutan my name is Maria Makasait so it's because walang consistencies na nangyari na tinuro hindi walang follow up so, hindi nila naiintindihan lalo na ang pangalan pala nila ay Maria, ang pangalan pala niya ay Maria Bernadette Makasait. Ang natatandaan lang niya is the Maria and the Makasait. It's because there is inconsistency and of course the deepening of their understanding of the subject or tipong the topic na tinuturo mo. Alright? So, pag may consistencies, of course, longer terms ang goal ang meron kayo. Not only sa parents, sa part ng parents o sa part ng teacher, at the same time sa part din ng estudyante. Dala-dala niya na yun hanggang paglaki niya. Okay, okay. pagdating niya sa, sa kinder, what is your name? So, my name is Maria Bernadette B. Makasait. 
Pagdating sa high school, can you tell me about yourself? So, I am Maria Bernadette B. Makasite. So, that is the meaning of the longer term goals. Because we have the consistencies and the deepening their understanding of the subject matter. Okay po ba tayo doon? Alright. So, educators can assist learning in creating meaningful learning goals that are consistent with both personal and educational aspiration and interest. Alright, as an educator, as a teacher, or for you guys, as a future educator, you have to imply in every discussion or in every lessons that you have, meron talaga tayong valuing. Alright? Dapat meron tayong valuing na tipong at the end of this subject, not only academically, but also um, it can help you to develop your personal attitude and behavior. So, ipasok pa rin po natin. And pasok pa rin po siya sa goal of the learning process. You have always the valuing. Not only in academically, but also in the development of their personal being. Alright? So, Next. The third one. The third one is we have construction of knowledge. So the successful learner can link new information with existing knowledge in meaningful ways. So knowledge widens and deepens as you students continue to build links between new information and experiences and their existing knowledge base. So the nature of these links can take a variety of forms such as adding to, modifying, or reorganizing existing knowledge or skills. How these links are made or developed may vary in different subject areas and among students with varying talents, interests, and abilities. However, unless new knowledge become integrated with the learner's prior knowledge and understanding, this new knowledge remains isolated, cannot be used most effective and in new tasks, and does not transfer readily to new situations. So, of course, educator can assist learning in acquiring and integrating knowledge by a number of strategies that have been shown to be effective with learners of varying abilities such as concept, mapping, and thematic. Okay, when we talk about the third principle, it is, um, nasa kanya na yung bagong, I, I mean, nasa kanya, sa isang learner, nasa kanya na yung skills. Okay. With another approach of another technique of another the tipong learning, ma ko combine niya yung ano niya pang panibago niyang learning. Okay, for example, the children or the child is already know how to write letter A. Okay, how to write letter A? Tinuro an natin ngay na magbasa. That this is letter A. Okay. And that certain student already know the letter A. Okay, this is how you read letter A. Ah. Ah. So, that learner already know how to write and what is letter A. But in this sense, marunong or tinuruan mo siyang paano magbasa ng A. Okay? Ah. How about ng letter B? Okay? How about ng letter B? Le this is letter B. Alam niya din yun anong letter B. So, we, we can read this as B. B. Okay? So, when you combine, boy, for example, ha? Example lang po. For example, you, dito tayo sa A and B. Okay? A and B. Kinik. Okay. Sinabi mo sa bata, ito yung A. Okay. It is, um, pagbasa niya is A. How about the B? Is equals to B. Okay. And when you read this one, 
Okay, kunyari, oh, sinabi mo sa bata. Okay, basahin mo. Ah. Okay, ah. With letter B. B. Oh, may A siya sa dulo. So, ang pagbasa niyan, aba. Okay. Again, a, and then, ba. Aba. Okay. So, how about this one? Okay. Okay, we have the a, and then we have the b. But, we have already the letter o. So, ang pagbasa ng letter o is o. O pa din. Okay, o. Alright. So, we have the a, a, sabi ng bata, a, and then b. O, letter o yung dulo. We have the abo. Okay, abo. Ayun. So, doon natututo yung bata. Di ba? That learner is already know what's letter A, letter B, and letter O. Tinuruan mo paano bigkasin ang A. Pa tinuruan mo paano bigkasin ang letter B. And of course, by combining those letters, you can already read a simple words. So, siya ang pasok kay... Ay, sorry. Siya ang pasok kay... Kai constructions of knowledge. The teacher is already constructing another knowledge, and it can link to another information with existing knowledge in meaningful ways. All right. So let's now talk about the fourth principles. Okay, that would be strategic thinking. So the successful learners can create and use our repertoire of thinking and reasoning strategies to achieve complex learning goals. Okay, successful learners use strategic thinking in their approach to learning, reasoning, and problem solving, and concept learning. So they understand and can use a variety of strategies to help them reach learning and performance goals and to apply their knowledge in novel situation. So they also continue to expand their repertoire of strategies by reflecting in the methods they use to see work well for them by receiving guiding instruction and feedback and by observing or interacting with appropriate models. Of course, learning outcomes can be enhanced can be enhanced if educators assist learners in developing, applying, and assessing their strategic learning skills. Alright, so under the fourth principle is the strategic thinking. Of course, every learning has a different approach on how to deal with with the lesson, with the situation. So, pasok po siya, metacognition is still present and that is under the strategic thinking. Okay, pasok pa rin po si metacognition. For example, ikaw, sa problem sa math. Okay, um, I'm sorry for that. So, strategic thinking, for example, meron kayong assignment sa algebra for that day. So, in order to solve that current problem, of course, you have your strategies. You have your formulas. Pero, ang binigay ng teacher sa inyo is the formula, not the strategy on how to um, solve the algebra problem. But, in your sense, dahil may formula na kayo, so, sinundan nyo yung formula, right? Pagkasunod nyo ng formula, nakuha nyo yung sagot. And then, the teacher follow-ups, okay? Follow-ups, as you can still remember, the the second or the third principles, kailangan may follow-up. So, tinuruan kayo, okay? Ito yung formula, ito po ang steps. So, of course, 
nakuha mo, kunyari, nakuha mo yung tamang sagot, of course, by your own strategy, without the, the instructions of the teacher, kasi nga, um, nabibilong siya sa tipong HADS, or uh, HADS, which is the higher order thinking skills, na tipong, ikaw mo na mag-solve ng problem mo, at the same time, iko-correct natin at the end of the day. So, at the, as your, um, sa sarili mong te technique, Okay, sarili mo strategy, nagawa mo naman ng maayos yung problem solving or the, to solve the problem in algebra. So, by that, pasok siya sa strategic thinking. Sinundan mo lang yung formula, then you solve your own problem, and then nakinig ka sa teacher mo at the end of the day. Alright? So, another, reasoning. Okay, reasoning. How about reasoning sa isang issue? We're not talking about political or something na issue. Um, something issue in the Philippines or in the country, right? So, bago mo, bago ka nag-reason out, may background ka muna sa current na issue. At the same time, nag-gawa ka ng advantage and disadvantage. After you do the advantage and disadvantage, then you are already reasoning or citing your reason for that issue. So, pasok siya kay strategic thinking. Paano mo i-deal yung situation? Paano mo i-deal yung problem? Alright? So, the fifth one, second to the last. We have the thinking about thinking. It is the higher order strategies for selecting and monitoring mental operation, facilitate creative and critical thinking. So, successful learners can reflect on how they think and learn. Set reasonable learning or performance goal. Select potentially appropriate learning strategies or methods and monitor their progress towards this goal. So, in addition, successful learners know what to do if a problem occurs or if they are not making sufficient or timely progress towards a goal. So, they can generate alternative methods to reach their goals or reassess to appropriateness and utility of the goal. So, instructional methods that focus on helping learners develop their higher order or the metacognitive strategies can enhance student learning and personal responsibility for learning. Okay, for this one, guys, do you still remember our metacognitive na topic? So, pasok po siya doon. Thinking about thinking. Um, especially doon sa part ng expert uh, na learners and the novice learners. Alright? So, hindi ko na siya further discuss. Balikan na lang po natin yung video presentation natin about metacognition. Thinking about thinking. Alright? So, for the six uh, principles, we have the context of learning. So, learners or learning <coughs> is influenced by environmental factors including cultures, technology, and instructional practices. So, Learn, learning does not occur in a vacuum. Teacher play a ma major interactive role with both the learner and the learning environment. Of course, malaki ang role ni teacher. Okay? Ang learning ko, hindi yan kagaya na pag binakyum mo, suyok lahat yung dumi. Hindi po ganun ang, or pasok lahat ang dumi. Sorry, bisaya yun na. Sorry. Um, hindi lahat na tipong itapat mo lang sa kailangan mong malaman na iintindihan mo na kaagad. Hindi po ganun. As you can see or as you can still remember that every learner is a unique individual. So we have two different of learner. We have the expert learners and the novice learners. Diba? So malaki ang factors ni teacher. And of course, ang paniniwala ng mga bata ay si teacher palagi ang tama. Okay, so dapat we should be mag-ingat. As a future educators, guys, or as a educators, dapat mag-ingat tayo anong nilalabas natin na information sa mga bata. Double check natin if correct or not, alright? So cultural or group influences on students can impact many 
educationally relevant variables such as motivation, orientation towards learning, and ways of thinking. So technologies and instructional practices must be appropriate for learners' level of priority knowledge, cognitive abilities in their learning and strategy thinking strategically. So regarding the technologies we have or instructional materials for learning, we have to double check if appropriate ba siya for the level level sa knowledge ng mga bata. For example, gagamit ka as a teacher gagamit ka ng computer. Ngayon, pinagamit mo yung mga bata ng computer. Eh, hindi naman lahat ng bata o estudyante may alam sa computer. Especially if you are assigned sa mga blib-blib na lugar, hindi naman ganun ka-wide ang alam nila sa computer. Tapos magagalit ka pa kagad kasi, pati hindi mo alam ito? Hindi mo ba nga kung marunong ba silang gumamit ng computer? Okay. Hindi mo nga alam or in as a teacher kung marunong ba silang mag-turn on ng computer. Alright? So, of course, you have to be very careful in choosing your materials. Alright, we have the classroom environment, particularly to the degree to which it is nurturing or not. It can also have significant impact to on students' learning. Okay. For this, learning does not occur in a vacuum. So, sabi ko nga, di ba kanina, teachers, um, kagaya dito um, sa last part, classroom environment. So, we have to ask ourselves um, as a future educators, um, pagpasok natin sa classroom natin, is it conducive for learning? What do we mean by conducive? Sa classroom pa lang ba kaagad? Uh, comfortable ba si teacher na magturo dahil dahil is it well ventilated or well na ilaw yung classroom how about the mga bata gaano kalaki ang classroom gaano kadami ang mga bata of course you have to consider your environment for learning kasi baka sa sobrang sikip ng classroom mo hindi ka na maintindihan ng mga mga estudyante mo kasi ang init-init sa loob ng classroom mas sikip pa so you have to ask yourself is it conducive for learning yung classroom ko okay how about the ilaw okay malaking factor ang ilaw ah umaga naman yung klase ko how about kung biglang kumulimlim dumilim Paano makikita o ang sinusulat ng mga sudyante? Is it well ventilated enough? Okay, malaking factor. How about mga electric fans mo? Of course, kahit naman siguro ikaw sa teacher, kung, kung mainit masyado sa loob ng klase mo, iinit din yung ulo mo, ba? Lalo-lalo na kung magulo din yung mga bata kasi nga naiinitan sila. It's very, very malaking role ang classroom environment. Alright, so we will discuss the next um, um, the next topic that is the motivational and effective factors. So on our next video, we will discuss the motivational and effective factors, developmental and social factors, and the individual differences factors. Alright, so I hope you learned something from our discussion today. I hope you stay well and stay safe, everyone. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.